In this video, you'll learn how to properly set up and use an Arbor Assays Competitive ELISA kit. Always read the protocol that comes in the kit box, whether this is your first time or you've used Arbor Assays kits for years. Always wear personal protective equipment when working in the lab. Start by taking the kit box out of the refrigerator or freezer. Unpack the kit box. Note any reagents that must remain cold or on ice and allow all remaining reagents to warm to room temperature for 30 minutes. Warming to room temperature is equally important for components that contain desiccants, including coated ELISA plates. Opening desiccated packs prior to reaching room temperature allows damp air to settle on the cold component, hydrating and thereby damaging it. Check the included desiccant pack. It should be blue. If it is pink, do not use the component and contact us. Some reagents come as a concentrate and need to be diluted before use. Be sure to dilute any concentrates per the kit protocol. For example, dilute the 5x assay buffer concentrate to a 1x working solution by combining one volume of concentrate and four volumes of deionized water. Here, we are combining two milliliters of 5X assay buffer concentrate with eight milliliters DI water. Invert to mix. In a similar manner, dilute the 20x wash buffer concentrate to a 1x working stock by combining one volume of 20x concentrate and 19 volumes of DI water in a suitable container. Here we are combining 8 milliliters of 20x wash buffer concentrate with 152 milliliters DI water. Stir to mix. Label tubes and add the appropriate volume of 1x assay buffer to each tube. Pipette the standard stock solution up and down several times prior to dispensing to ensure accurate delivery into the tubes labeled standard one. Continue serially diluting into the remaining standard tubes as described in the protocol. Outline the position of each standard and sample on the assay layout sheet provided in the assay protocol. Determine the number of wells to be used and return unused wells to the foil pouch with desiccant. Carefully pipette standards and samples toward the bottom of the wells using a fresh pipette tip for each addition. Use duplicate wells for each standard and sample. Use either a repeater or multi-channel pipette to first add the conjugate and then the antibody to the wells. Take care not to splash and contaminate neighboring wells. Gently tap the side of the plate to mix. If the protocol requires shaking, use a plate shaker to ensure thorough mixing of the reagents in the well. Incubate according to the time, temperature, and shaking guidelines in the kit protocol. At the end of the incubation, wash the plate using the diluted 1x wash buffer. If using a plate washer, thoroughly prime the plate washer with 1x wash buffer prior to using. Other wash buffers may contain sodium azide, which inhibits peroxidase activity. The number of cycles and volume of 1x wash buffer for each assay are indicated in the assay protocol. After the washing procedure, invert the plate one final time and firmly blot on a fresh, clean, lint-free tissue. If you do not have access to a plate washer, the plate can be washed manually. Remove the liquid in the wells by either aspirating or inverting the plate. 
Firmly blot the plate on lint-free tissue to ensure no liquid remains on the rim of the wells. Use a pipette or squirt bottle filled with 1x wash buffer to wash the wells as indicated in the assay protocol. Remove the wash buffer by aspirating or inversion. Proceed directly to the next step to prevent the wells from drying out. Add substrate to each well using a repeater or multi-channel pipette. Incubate as indicated in the assay protocol. As the TMB reacts with the bound peroxidase enzyme, the liquid in the well will develop a blue color. After incubation, add the stop solution to each well. The wells will turn yellow. Please read the plate immediately at the wavelength indicated in the assay protocol. For more information on data analysis, please refer to our Analyzing Data video.